Hey guys, Kuchiro here with RC Culture, and I wanted to start off by showing you a couple of new things. First off, I'm wearing our organic shirt with the small logo in front, large logo in the back, and here I have our pullover hoodie with the large logo in the back, and the website URL down the left sleeve so people can see that while you're holding your controller out. You can find these at store.rcculture.com, along with several other types of clothing. If you've been paying attention to our Facebook group, you probably saw one of our members was asking for some help with soldering because he didn't have a soldering station. I volunteered to help him out with that and thought, why not make a video out of it? As I've gone to different events and things, I've seen people doing a lot of things soldering that just made it harder on themselves than it has to be. So I thought I'd share some of my tips with you guys so that hopefully you can learn something and, and be able to make soldering much easier for you. Okay, so first up I thought I'd show you guys just a couple of connectors really quickly. Um, back in the day, pretty much all you had for choices were Tamiya style connectors. And this is one of those connectors. This is just the male side. I don't even have a female side anymore. I found this in my spares bin to be able to show you. And in essence what you would do is you would take one of these bullet style uh, end pins, solder your wire into this gap here, close the pins over it, and then insert that in here, and then you do the same for the female side and then connect it together. A while after the Tamiya connector came along the Deans connector. And the Deans connector is identified by this red shade of plastic typically, but more importantly the shape. Again we have a female and a male side, and they're arranged in a plus sort of configuration, half of a plus basically. And they just slide together, they only go together one way, and our wires are soldered onto either side. This is the type of connector that we're going to be soldering today, but there's been several other connectors that have come along after this. The next style of connector that came along was the Traxxas style connector. And you can see here again we have a male end and a female end, and they just slide together. And what you do is you solder your wires to these pins which you then insert into the ends here. The latest style connector that's come along is called the XT60 connector. And you can see one here. Again, we have a male and a female side. And again, there's only one way to put it together. You can see it's slightly pointed down towards the bottom. And they just slide together. The difference with the XT60 though is that you get these rounded channels on either end that you solder your wires into and then they're cut away on half of the side so that you can easily set your wire down in, solder it in, flip it over and do the same. And then there's also a channel around this gold connector where you can slide a piece of heat shrink tubing into so that you get a nice solid connection. And These are my personal favorites. So this is my soldering station, and it's a Hakko 936. It's a professional level soldering station, costs a bit more money than a standalone uh, single stick soldering iron, if you will, that doesn't have a separate base station with temperature control uh, away from the actual stand uh, with your sponge and your water. However, I have seen that since Hakko has gone on to a completely different design that's a one-piece design now instead of the two pieces, that Hobby King has started to make a copy of this. I can't say anything about the quality of it. I've not touched one or seen one. I've only seen it in, in their catalog. Um, but it is much, much, much cheaper than what this unit would cost you new. And with our soldering station we have two different tips here. This is just a, a point tip which is good if you're doing some detail work. Um, typically nothing that you'll be doing with an RC would need this type of a tip, but it comes with the Hakko. And we have an optional tip, which is what we will typically use. That you can see here is a lot like a flat blade screwdriver. Some of the other tools that we're going to be using, obviously we need a roll of solder. We're going to be using what I call a third hand. Uh, this is basically just a stand that has clips on it, and this will hold our connector. 
and other things so we don't have to touch really, really small parts with our hands and risk burning ourselves. And I also have just a chunk of steel tubing, uh, square stock style tubing, and I put this under whatever I'm soldering on. Uh, it's a nice cold surface. I mean, even in the, the dead of summer, this is a, a cold piece of metal. So whatever lands on it is going to cool very quickly, and it's also not going to burn my table or anything else that I happen to be soldering on top of. And then finally we're going to need some sandpaper. This is just on a, solder, a sand, sandpaper stick, but it's regular sandpaper. It's nothing special for soldering. We can see that these are already pre-tinned. And what that means is that the solder has already been applied to the ends of these wires. If this was a new wire, it would just be the bare copper-colored wire, and you wouldn't see any of this nice shiny silver on it. Now, the first area that I see people going wrong when they're trying to do soldering is they're not heating the right side of the wire. And what I mean by that is, when you're using a soldering iron and you want to tin a wire, put the soldering iron on the bottom and then apply solder from the top. That will pull the solder into the wire and that way you'll get solder all the way through the wire instead of just sitting on the top or sitting on the side or wherever you happen to be heating it from and then trying to stick the solder on. It doesn't work. Just put the heat on the bottom and let the solder go through. Now if this wire was already attached to something, obviously you just put the heat soldering iron on the top and eventually it'll heat up enough and it'll come free. Conversely, if you're trying to apply this to something, like we're going to be putting this connector on shortly, we want to actually heat the connector from the bottom and then get the heat to go through the connector, through the wire, and melt the wire down onto it. And then we can take the heat away and let it cool and the wire will be stuck. Now if we take a look at our Dean's connector, we want to put the female side on this particular wire. We can see that these are actually really, really shiny. And just like when you're painting something, you need to have a little bit of a rough surface for it to be able to actually connect to. So we're going to rough these up a little bit with our sandpaper here, and that'll help with our soldering process. You don't need to go crazy with it. We just want to be able to see some scratches on it. And that way when the solder goes and tries to stick there, it's going to have some ridges and valleys to be able to stick into, rather than just sitting on the surface. Now if we look very carefully at our Dean's connector here, just below this top post, you can actually see there's a plus sign. So that's how you know which one is positive and which one is negative. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually tin the connector itself. So we're just going to apply a small amount of solder to our connector, and that'll help make it a little bit easier for us to get a good bond when we go to apply our wire to this connector. So again, I'm putting the heat on the bottom side, and if we just put a little bit of solder onto our tip, that makes it easier for the heat to transfer from the tip through whatever it is you're touching. So here we got solder melting instantly. We take that away, just let that cool for a moment. So now I'm going to take a, a piece of heat shrink tubing and I'm going to slide this over our wire. Now heat shrink tubing will generally shrink to about two-thirds of its original size. There are variations in that, but that's a sort of a good rule of thumb. So if I can easily slide it over my wire, then I know it's going to shrink tight and be a good fit. I'm going to slide that way down here because I don't want any heat from the soldering iron to actually cause that to start to shrink. Otherwise, I won't be able to move it up where I want it to be. So then I'm going to place my wire right about where I want it and hook the end in the other jaw. Get these sort of aligned where I want them to finally be. I'm going to take our soldering iron. Again, heat up the bottom. And there. Hold that for a second, and then it's good. So now we're just going to go through and tin our positive side. Okay, so I've rotated the jaw in our third hand here so I can hold it at the angle that I want it at. And we can move these however we want them to appear. And again, I'm just going to take the soldering iron, and I'm going to put it on the bottom side of the connector.
a little bit of solder on it first. Once it's there, it only takes a moment to put the solder on. And now I'm going to get everything lined up with our other wire where I want it to sit. And I've already got our heat shrink tubing here on the other end. So I'm going to take the soldering iron and go ahead and apply this wire to this connector. And that's pretty much all it takes. Now obviously when we're soldering, we're dealing with some very, very high temperatures. Uh, if you're doing this with a, a base station type soldering station that I'm using where you can set your own temperatures. And it depends on how quickly you want things to happen. You can use a lower temperature and things will go a little bit slower and it's a little bit easier to control. And as you get more experience, you can turn the temperature up uh, to a bit of a higher range and things will heat up very quickly. Um, obviously, you know, you got to be careful with that much temperature and how you're handling the soldering iron. Right now, my soldering iron is set at 375 degrees Celsius, which is about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So things happen very quickly with heating up the solder, um, but also remember your wire is going to heat up as you're holding it, which is why we're using the third hand here. Um, the connector itself, the plastic here can melt if it gets too hot, if you touch it with a soldering iron. So you want to be very careful where you're touching and how much temperature you're using. Once our wires have cooled to the touch, however, we can slide our heat shrink tubing back down. And we want to slide this over our joint. I'm going to take this out here. It can be a little bit fiddly at times, depending on the size of our tubing and our wire and everything else. Okay, so here we have our connector and I've slid the heat shrink tubing down over the ends. We want to make sure we get that nice and close to our connector so that we don't have any risk of another wire slipping in there and causing any kind of a short. And all we need to do to shrink it is to apply heat. So here I just have a simple straight regular old cigarette lighter type of thing. And we're going to heat this up. And you'll see that the tubing will shrink right down. Again, we're dealing with open flame here, so be careful with this. Take your time. There's no need to hurry with any of this, and you can always redo it. So here's our finished connector. We've sanded the tabs on the connector to provide a good adhesion point for our wires. We've then tinned the connector to make it easier to solder. Our wires were already pre-tinned, but we talked about how to tin wire. And we put our heat shrink tubing on first so that we could then slide it back up on when we're done with the soldering. And then we applied some heat to the heat shrink to make it actually shrink down to provide a more secure connection.